Hello friends, this is Aronica Cole and welcome to my sew along for Nomi Pattern 2072, which of course is what I'm wearing here as well. So I wanna talk a little bit about the inspiration behind this design, as well as the sizing. And then of course, you know, we'll get into designer notes as we get into this actual sew along. So again, my name is Aronica Cole and I sew underneath the name Needle and the Bell. And I am so excited about this here design. So this is perfect for um, whether you are into jazz festivals, whether you are into long walks in the park, whether you are just trying to get dressed up or down depending upon your fabric choices for a perfect spring summer event. The beautiful thing is that you can actually layer this item and it can go into fall winter months along with you. One of the favorite things that I love and one of the trends that I've seen on TikTok as well as Instagram is seeing how people are taking their um, summer and their spring items and taking them through fall. And this is absolutely one of the things that you can do with this here outfit as well. Now this pattern does feature, of course, the jumpsuit, which I'm wearing today, as well as the dress. We're doing the sew along for the jumpsuit though, okay? So the fabric that I use for this here jumpsuit is a denim, and I did line it with your basic white woven, as you can see here. So it's drafted for woven fabrics. So if you have a fabric that does have a little bit of stretch, excellent. If it's like a stretch woven, that will work as well. If you have a fabric that has no stretch at all or just a little mechanical stretch, that will also be perfect. So let's get into the inspiration behind this. As you all know, last year I did have a mastectomy and I have been committed to showing off and celebrating my breasts as much as I possibly can, including with this here super deep V-neck, uh, romper and dress situation. But also, I just love this silhouette. When I was in college, in fact, my senior year at Spelman College, I created, in essence, something very similar to this. But y'all, I did not have a sewing machine. I had one of those hand sewing machines, which really don't work very well. Sorry if you have one. Um, and I, in essence, put together something like this for senior week. Now it was a way messier version than this, but nonetheless, it had these two panels that came down into kind of like a waist area, but that was where it ended for me. And y'all, I swear that thing stayed on with a hope and a prayer, okay? But um, I wanted to create in essence, that silhouette. Why? Because I just love how feminine this offers. And I also love the way that this can be dressed up as well as dressed down. Again, depending on the material. But let's talk about the suggested fabrics. So some of the suggested fabrics, of course, are a chambray. Y'all, I actually have a secret love affair with chambray. I feel like chambray should be used all the time, okay? Um, we've got charmeuse, fancy. Um, cotton blends, of course. We've got the crepe de chine. Um, and I'm actually fairly certain that I just mispronounced that. I've been working on that pronunciation. Don't come for me in the comments, okay, friends? Um, we've got some gauze. Like a good double gauze is going to give you that flowy, that drape. But if you do decide to use a gauze, because we know that gauze does tend to grow, make sure that you're aligning it with a good um, basic cotton that does not grow, okay? Just as an FYI, okay, friends? Um, a good linen blend fantastic. And then of course, like your silky types. So we're talking about like the silk, the satins, all of that. Now using one of those fabrics is really going to take this look up and it's going to make it way more fancier. Um, and you can wear it in a lot more different places. If you're looking for like a date to a museum, grab hold to some of that satin or that silk, right? That'll be really like nice and little, like giving it, it's giving up scale, right? If you're going to a park or if you're wanting this for everyday wear, definitely doing this in that linen or that gauze blend is going to give you what you need. Um, so yeah, the only other thing that you will need for this pattern is going to be an invisible zipper, which we're going to be placing in the back. Everything else is done via fabric. And with that, let's go ahead and get started into our sew along. Okay, so let's go over our pattern pieces that we need in order to make this pattern happen. So starting from top to bottom, we have the front bodice pieces, which are here. We've got the main piece as well as the lining piece. Then we also have the back bodice piece. We've got the lining piece and the main piece here as well. Then we have um, the waistband area. This is the back. So we've got um, our interface pieces as well, interface lining as well as 
our back piece, main fabric. And then we have our interface lining piece here along with the front piece. And then we've got four pocket pieces here as well. So we've got um, just our typical pocket piece. This is going to be attached at the waistband. And then we've got two legs cut that are the front, two legs cut that are the back. Not pictured here are four strings that are used to create the bunching with the casing, as well as two of the ties to tie the back piece together. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the steps of construction. Hey friends, it's time for your very first designer note. So the first designer note that I have is to make sure that you're adjusting your pattern pieces before you go ahead and cut out the fabric. This feels like it's obvious, but I know that a lot of people like to make muslins. Here's the thing, if you measure the crotch depth as well as take a look at your finished measurements, it's gonna give you a lot of the information that you need to prevent you from making a muslin. Why am I being like, don't make a muslin? This here garment, is a fabric hog, okay? So you're gonna wanna make sure that you aren't wasting as much fabric as possible. What I will say is that if you typically have to do a full booty or full tummy adjustment, you may not have to do one as much here. Why? Because this here is graded and it has a lot more ease in the pant as well as the skirt section. So you may not have to do that. So make sure that you're taking a look at what the finished measurements have before you go ahead and cut your garment. And make sure that you are doing whatever adjustments that you need to. That bust is going to matter in case you're trying to, of course, start a Sony fans. We're not here to judge, okay? Also making sure that your waist has been properly graded because your waist is an area that is not going to give too much give. And with that, go ahead and keep going. I'll see you at the next designer note. Okay, so the first pieces that we're gonna be starting out with are going to be the top pieces. Now I'm gonna be doing things a little bit differently. So let's go over what it is that I'm going to be doing. You all know that I love to take the path of least resistance when it comes to creating my garments. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting my right sides together for my top piece and I'm gonna be doing this with all four pieces because we're going to have to create a casing along this line so that we can put in our little ties, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my bodice lining piece and I'm going to match it with the main piece. And again, I'm doing this for all four of these front pieces. Lining it up, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be using my 5 8 seam allowance and I'm going to go ahead and stitch around this arm side as well as down this part here. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to create a nice clean inside where we only have to fold this down one time. So I'm going to be doing again right sides together here and then here. So let's head on over to the machine and do that. Also, because I'm using this lightweight denim, I highly recommend using a chambray or a nice lightweight denim because it's going to give this like sporty feel. Um, I will be finishing all of my edges or all of my seams with my serger, okay? So with that, let's go ahead and get to sewing. Okay, so as we can see here, I did go ahead and do this 5 8 seam allowance on both of these areas. What I'm gonna do now to make sure that when I turn this out, this lays flat, I'm gonna go ahead and first trim my seam allowance down because I don't need all of this extra. Now, if you like to use scissors, by all means use scissors. If you like to use pinking shears, by all means use pinking shears. Um, I love using my rotary cutter for everything, so that's what I'm gonna use. But we're gonna go ahead and right where this curve is, we're gonna go ahead and just make a couple of small snips here along that curve so that when we turn this out, it lays flat. I'm also gonna go ahead and trim down the seam allowance on the inside. And remember that, that we're repeating this for all four sides. I'm gonna use the rotary cutter with the pinking shears on this side just because I feel like it. <laughs> Now, one of the things that I will say is that you should absolutely keep your irons hot, ready to go as you're sewing this garment. We're gonna be doing a lot of pressing 
and just to make it easy, um, like I have moved my pressing board so that it's closer to me. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this out and look at this already. It looks so good. So now we're gonna go ahead and press this into place. So let me grab my iron and my pressing board and we'll get to pressing. Okay, so now that we are nice and pressed, look at how beautiful this like this arm curve looks, okay? We're going to attach our shoulder seams together using our 5 8 seam allowance matching the front piece to this back piece and then we're going to sew with that 5 8 seam allowance. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces and we're attaching the front to the back. What I wanted to make sure that I showed you is that I did go ahead and use my pinking shears on this edge right here so that as I created my casings, I did not have to worry about the fraying. So we have all of our pieces right here and we're simply going to match our shoulder seams together. Like so we've got our top on top of our bottom and then we're going to use our 5 8 seam allowance to go ahead and sew this. I need to just go ahead and extend that out, sorry. So that matches up. So we're gonna do that with our 5 8 seam allowance right there. And if you need to, go ahead and clip or pin that together, however it is that you see fit to hold your garments together as you are sewing. We're gonna go ahead and sew this together now. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and done our 5 8 seam allowance here, we're gonna go ahead and press out this top now keep in mind that this is not a straight line a lot of times the shoulder seams are straight line this is not a straight line this is a curved line so important to point that out okay we're going to go ahead and press out these seams and this is going to create our casing for our little uh our little ties which we're going to be doing as soon as we are done pressing this out. Now, if you're like, hey girl, I don't feel like doing all that pressing, I have another tool that you can use. Sometimes I feel like it's hard for me to get in here and press out. So I will use this here wooden, uh, like it's almost like a finger presser. I forget the name of the tool, but I use it for my quilting. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just use that to kind of press open these seams. Like I'm literally pressing them open. And then I'm gonna go in with my hot iron because this is already down. And I'm gonna go ahead and press that down. Now we're going to go ahead and add in another stitch on each side that's going to be a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So we're going to be coming in on this side and doing a quarter inch seam allowance there and that is going to create our casing we're going to do that on both of these pieces here okay so now important to note we're back at the machine i want to make sure that you pull this sleeve part down because sometimes because we're sewing on a curve it can get kind of caught up here so as you're sewing make sure that you're uh doing your due diligence to pull that down and so that way uh you don't worry about that getting caught up okay so again we are doing one quarter inch away from the edge and as you're starting now my machine automatically does this but because this is a high tension area make sure that you're back stitching or otherwise making sure that 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 uh start of your stitch is really uh reinforced and this is kind of like this apex of the the sleeve the shoulder area right here so I'm pulling that extra hard because I just want to make sure that that gets caught. And then just making sure that fabric is nicely flat. So now that we've gotten to this end here, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I backstitch because again, this is an area that is going to have a lot of tension. So I just wanna make sure that it does not come out. So now I'm gonna repeat this three more times on the other pieces, but this is how it's looking. And on the top end, this is how it's looking. Now I'm using a variegated thread, so my thread is changing colors because style preference. So let's go ahead and repeat this three more times. Okay, so the next step that we're gonna do since we're at the machine right now is we're gonna go ahead and close up our side seams. 
So we have our side seams, which are like this. Now, what we're gonna do to close these up beautifully and make sure that there are no seams touching us, we're gonna go ahead and match up our main fabrics together like this. And make sure that your notches line up. So you can see my notches right here. I'm gonna just stick a little clip right there to hold that together. And then we're gonna bring it down to our lining pieces and line that up and match those notches up as well. Now we're just gonna stick a stitch in here, 5 8 seam allowance as well. And then we're going to do the other side before we move on to creating our drawstrings. So to make our drawstrings, we're going to be doing the exact same thing for all of these pieces. Now, it might look like I have less pieces than are necessary because for our, um, our shoulder casings, we actually need four. Instead of cutting out four, because I absolutely hate turning drawstrings, I did cut out two. So that way I could just cut these each in half once I'm done. We're just going to simply fold these in half, our right sides together, and sew straight down before turning them out. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Say a prayer. It doesn't take forever. Okay, so now what feels like five hours later, I've gone ahead and I've turned all of my drawstrings. So again, like I said, I had made my shoulder strings uh, double the size so I could just simply cut them in half. So I'm just going to cut that in half just like this. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and actually thread these, um, these four drawstrings that we created. We're going to thread them through the casings that we created here. Now, because this is a little bit different than what the, pat the pattern tutorial has suggested, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to thread them through and then I'm going to top stitch right here to hold my, um, to hold my drawstrings in place. So let's take a look at what that looks like. 
So taking my safety pin, I highly recommend using these gold safety pins here. I feel like they are way more uh, durable than the average silver one. So I'm going to just go ahead and put that on over here through the end, just like this. Then I'm going to start where I kind of would like to finish. So pulling that back, I'm going to just go ahead and throw this through. Now, if you have like one of those little bodkin tools, I've got one. I can't find it right now. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so using one of these little tools, I highly recommend using this. Literally the best thing in the world. Okay, so because we are going to have our like our tails come out on this side, I'm going to go ahead and thread this tool through this side. Then I'm going to go ahead and hook one end of my, um, my little drawstring situation here through. Oop, did it go through? Okay, so it, it turned around on me. Hold on. Let's, let's get them in. Okay. And so I want it to be at the end so that it's easier for me to go through. And I want to make sure I see that that little hook came through. And then I'm going to close it to make sure that it doesn't catch on the rest of my fabric. And then I'm just going to simply pull this through like so. And I'm going to pull it through so that it comes to the very end. Oops, snapped out of my hand. So I want it to be like at the very end. Pull it through just a little bit more. Just like that. So I have just the very end right here. So I'm going to do that with the other one as well. I'm going to go ahead and take this off of here. Again, I'm going to thread it through this other side. Oops. I'm like, go in. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's grab another one of our pieces pieces of drawstring go ahead and hook that on here I feel like it's like when you put if you've ever been fishing whenever you're putting like bait on the end of the um the end of your fishing rod that's what this feels like so now I'm just going to go ahead and again pull this through and sometimes you need to just maneuver it ever so slightly so that it can get through and then, so we're pulling through, and again, we're just going to go ahead and pull this through so that it's at the very edge. And I can feel both of my uh, drawstrings right here. So we're gonna just go ahead, pop this into the machine. And now I'm giving myself one quarter seam allowance right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and sew this into place. And we are gonna go ahead and backstitch over it because I want it to be on there nice and firm. And so I'm going to show you how I plan to wear mine. Let me trim down these little strings since we're done in this area. And I'm also going to trim that little piece of fabric as well because I don't, don't need it there. Snip, snip. Oh, that does not want to snap. There we go. Okay. So the way that this is designed, actually, let's go ahead and tie these knots at the end. Not that they'll ever slip through, but you know, aesthetics. So we've got one knot. Now we've got two knots. And you can trim this off if you want to. If not, just leave it there. And so I'm just going to go ahead and pull this. And as you can see, it's scrunching up. This is important because literally my shoulders are not normally wide enough for this garment to actually fit without it. So I'm, I'm really just going to go ahead. And this is why it's so important that you like double knot or um, reinforce your stitches as you're going through, especially at the beginning and ends, because this pulling can be a little aggressive especially if you get it the way that you want it. And I just want to make sure that this is like nice and tight. And so as you can see, the difference between the way that this shoulder looks versus this shoulder, right? So like I've taken it in 
almost like three inches. So that is kind of where I would like it. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this off because now this side of the shoulder is completed. I'm going to make it nice and tight because again, I want it to stay like this is, this is the design. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now the final step to prepping the bodice is actually putting in the drawstring or the attachment in the back. Now, we already have, if you've already marked your notches, then you already know exactly where you're going. Now, this step is, of course, different from what the tutorial says because we're kind of doing things a little bit differently. Now, I specifically measured where I wanted mine to go, and mine is going to go this area right here. Why? Because I want it to be a little bit lower so that I can get a little bit more support where I need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead, grab hold of one of my drawstrings, just like this. I'm going to go ahead and pin it in place. And then I'm going to just put in a stitch on this side and I'm going to repeat that on the other side of my bodice as well. All right, friends, it's time for designer note number two. After you have gone ahead and constructed your bodice piece, go ahead and try this on for fit. If you're like, oh, but I don't have the actual waistband on, go ahead and base that on just so that you can get a good feel about what that's going to fit. If there's too much space here, or if you need to remove some, or if you need to possibly recut and add some, this is going to be the perfect opportunity for you to see if this top area is going to fit because baby, this is the part that matters the most. Because again, the pants as well as the skirt portion, they have a lot of the ease built in, so you don't need to make, make as many adjustments. But try it on for fit now. So now that we've gone ahead and finished that bodice or gotten to a good stopping point with it, we're going to go ahead and work on our pants. Now this pattern does come with the option to have either a skirt or a pant bottom. For the purposes of this sew along, we're going with the pants. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add our pocket pieces. Now I've gone ahead and I've already put in my notches for where I need them to be, but we're going to be installing our pockets right at the top here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do a straight stitch down here. We're going to do the exact same thing on all of the pocket pieces for both the front and the back pieces. So that means we're going to be doing this a total of four times. I'm going to be doing this on my serger because I have a serger uh, that does a combo stitch that is both a chain stitch and a serger stitch. So I can just knock this out with one step. So I'm gonna go ahead over to that machine now and we're gonna go ahead and put in the pockets and all of the pieces. Okay, so I did go ahead and add my pockets to each of the pieces and then I did attach my front leg to my back leg. Now this pattern piece is kind of big so it's hard to see, but as you can see here, we did go ahead and add our seam on the inner thigh as well as this outer thigh area. So because I've done it on both of them, what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn one of my legs right side out. And then I'm going to match up my center seams by putting this leg inside of this other pant leg. And so I'm going to go ahead and match up these seams. I'm gonna just throw a little clip in here because this for me is the guideline. Now, with our back seam, we're not going to sew that completely up because we actually are going to put in an invisible zipper in this back area, okay? So just make sure that you did go ahead and mark your notch because that is going to, um, in essence, mark where we need to stop our uh, seam allowance at, or rather stop putting our stitch in so that we can make sure that we put in our... Um, our invisible zipper, okay? But this is the front of my garment right here. So I'm gonna be starting here and then I'm going to come down to this center crotch seam 
And then I'm going to stop at about this area right here. Now my markings got changed a little bit because I did make some adjustments to my pattern based off of um, my body. So I'm just going to remark this. And I love these pens. I feel like I talk about them for every sew along that I do because they are so helpful. I don't ever have to worry about this actually showing up. So we're gonna go ahead and sew that together now. Okay, so we've left the back opening. Now, of course, I don't actually need all of this space for the zipper, but I wanna make sure that as I'm installing the zipper, I give myself enough space to just do just that. The next part that we're gonna do, I've already gone ahead and basted my pockets into place on the front piece. So like, this is absolutely beautiful. I've got my pockets right here. It's almost like they're like invisible. I love that for me. We're gonna go ahead and put a gathering stitch from the back all the way around to the front and then to this back area again. Now I am not going to gather close to where my zipper install is going to be. Um, and honestly, I'm going to probably end up putting more gathers towards the front of my garment versus the back because of how my body is shaped. I feel like, um, you know, with gathering, you have that freedom to kind of do whatever is going to fit your body correctly. So that is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and gather this piece right here. I'm also going to gather my top parts. And by top parts, I mean my bodices. So I need to gather. I've got my marking right here. So I'm going to gather this bust area to this marking point right here. So you should have put these notches in. And so it's probably about a good seven to 10 inches that we're gathering right here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put those gathering stitches in on the sewing machine and come back. All right, so as we work to finish up this pattern, the last thing that we're gonna do before we fully construct everything is we're going to go ahead and create our waistband area. Now this is like a contoured waistband. So of course, all of our pieces are not gonna be straight. They're actually on a slight curve. The smaller part is up here. And this is our top area that connects to our bodice. And then the larger part is down here, which is this part that connects to the pant. So this is how this is actually gonna go where this is the front and this is the top that connects with the bodice. And as you can see, this arches up and it meets here where it kind of arches down. And so that is giving us that contour waistband that um, is actually my absolute favorite waistband in the world. So to construct this waistband, we're gonna go ahead and put our right sides together, of course. So it's going to look like this and we are leaving this back open because that is where we're going to be adding in our invisible zipper. And so our waistband install is going to look like this. So we're going to be putting in a seam right here as well as right here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing with our lining pieces as well. Okay, so now it's time for us to construct these pieces. So now, as you can see, we did go ahead and put that gathering stitch in. It looks absolutely beautiful. So um, I tend to over gather. It is just something that I like doing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simply match up my center point, which is right here. I know that because that is where my fold was for a very long time. I'm gonna just go ahead and put in a clip here. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure this out on the main fabric first, just because I just wanna make sure that, to see how my gathering did because I didn't measure at the time that I was gathering. And what I'm doing is I'm matching up these side seams together. So that way I know exactly how much more I either need to gather or I need to let my gather out. So, I'm just going to clip this into place. Again, the seams are my gauge for how well I've gathered, how much more or how much less I've got to gather. And I gotta love when your kids think that your clips are just toys for them to play with. They are not very important sewing tools. Okay. So now that I've got this all clipped together, I'm gonna just open it up 
just to kind of see. Okay, so I need a little bit more gathering here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up and space that out so that this is lining up with this. Okay. Clip that into place as well, cause looking good there. Now let's take a look at my front. This front piece is like gathered flawlessly. Great job, Aronica. This piece could go for a little bit more gathering. Um, so I'm going to take this clip out and move this over. Just give it some more space on here. Um, one side is always easier for me to gather than the other. But I'm going to do it gently because I did not do all those rows of gathering that they tell you to do. I didn't do that. Using my sewing machine to gather is not my favorite technique. I usually use my serger. So now let's see how we did there. Okay, and we can pull out a little bit of the gather. Um, and that fits perfectly now. And then let's take a look at this back piece as well. And I think that a lot of times gathering can be a little overwhelming, especially if you're plus size and you have a lot of fabric that you're navigating. Always have the pieces that you're looking to match up. Okay, and so it's looking like, looking like we could gather this just ever so slightly more. And now this is feeling pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just space this out. And I'm also accommodating for the fact that as I put this in my, sh my machine and kind of pull through, that it's going to also have some more spacing as I gather it through. Let's see. Okay, and that looks good to me. I'm just gonna put another clip there. So now that I've gone ahead and made sure that that spacing looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and take my lining piece and I'm going to clip this at the important parts, which are the seams and the center, as well as the back. And then we're just gonna go ahead, pop this into the machine and sew this at our 5 8 seam allowance as well. And then um, we'll be ready to install the top or the bodice piece now that this is done. Okay, so let's go ahead and press into place our beautiful uh, work that we have done with these gathers. Um, I'm not gonna lie, gathering is not really my favorite thing to do when it comes time to sewing, but the finish is always worth it. Now, important to note right here, is there's lots of gathering here towards the center. And then in this pocket area, I did leave that gathering out, okay? If you are someone who's like, girl, I'm, I'm gathering around my pockets, I love that for you. I love it for you. For me, your girl doesn't need any extra gathers around that hip area, okay? Also important to note that as we came close to this zipper area, where that zipper is gonna go. I also did not fully um, gather this area as well. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to prepare my uh, lining piece for me to go ahead and add my bodice. We're going to press down that 5 8 seam allowance. So just going to press this down and I'm going to do this throughout the entire garment. Okay. Just this lining piece and I'm pressing it towards me because we're going to add the bodice piece. We're going to initially attach the bodice to the main piece and then we're going to fold this up and top stitch this lining piece in place so that there is a nice, beautiful, clean finish on the inside, okay? Okay, so now that we've got the bodice added, things are looking beautiful. Let's turn this around so that you all can see kind of where we are. So we've got this attached. 
We've got to pull out some of our basting stitches, things like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and press this. So that way, as I clean things up on the inside and that is folding this up so that that has this nice clean finish, um, it's way easier. So I'm going to go ahead and press this and then we're going to go back to the machine to put this, um, to put our lining piece in place and again i'm just going to fold this down so that it's at that five five eight seam allowance and so that as i go around this is going to be so easy to just go ahead and top stitch into place okay All right, let's get ready to go ahead and install our invisible zipper. So now the first thing that you wanna do with your invisible zipper is you definitely want to um, open it up and press it. I'm gonna be using an invisible zipper foot to go ahead and install this zipper. Um, if you do not have an invisible zipper foot, you can definitely use a regular zipper foot. However, I do highly recommend investing in an invisible zipper foot. It is literally, it makes it so much easier. I did go ahead and finish these seams here or these edges here because I don't want any fraying when I install my zipper. So I'm going to be starting. Now remember, whenever you're installing a zipper, it's right sides together. So the right side of your zipper is definitely going to be what goes onto your garment. So I'm gonna be starting up here at the top. I'm lining up this little plastic area up here at the very top of my zipper. I am going to, after I'm done installing it, it's going to look like this. So this is going to be up here. I am simply just going to turn that down so you won't be able to see it. And so that my zipper comes all the way up to the top. But let's go ahead and see how this looks. Going ahead and using my zipper foot to install it. Okay, so if you're using a Bernina, you're gonna be using foot number 35. This is what we use for our zippers, our invisible zippers. There are zipper feet attachments for every machine though. So go ahead and look up what works best for your machine. So again, starting with your right sides together and that, um, that plastic piece at the very, very top, I'm gonna go ahead and feed this in. What I'm looking to do is make sure that my zipper is lined up with this little knot right here. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little hard to do. Behind a camera. Um, does not look like I got it lined up. So I'm going to lift my foot back up. And again, I'm looking so to have this lined up in the groove. And it might not start out that way, but it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, move my foot, my needle point over to a negative two position. And actually, I still can't see, so hold on. Does not look like I had, let, had that lined up because I do want to make sure that I cover up my chain stitch that I put back there. So I want to make sure in everything that I do that I'm lining this up properly. Okay. So you can see that I did not fully line that up because when I lift my needle and my foot rises up, the gar the um, zipper does not rise up with it. So I'm just gonna, there we go. 
and definitely move as slowly as you need to to install this zipper. And as you can see, now it's in the groove. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish installing my zipper. And then the last step is to hem the pant and we are completed. Final de designer note, make sure that you're going ahead to hem your pants with the proper hem amount. If you are vertically challenged, we don't use the word S-H-O-R-T here, right? Make sure that you're taking off enough length, right? You don't want to be wearing your pants or your dress and be tripping all over the place because y'all, that is not sexy, okay? We've seen it happen at the runways. We don't want that to happen to you. So that is the final designer note. Also, very quick ad. If you're like, hey girl, I'm not trying to hand sew today, leave those shank buttons off. It's fine. As you can see here, I don't have any shank buttons on this here one. That is a-okay. That just adds just a little extra zhuzh to it. I do love the way that those little shank buttons look on my dress. And I thought that on this jumpsuit, it would be a little too much. So we decided against it. So that is your final designer note. All right, friends. So if you have made it to this end where you're able to see my full garment, y'all, these pockets are bay. okay? Then I just wanna say thank you so much for joining me for this sew along for my newest pattern, ME 2072, which of course features this jumpsuit, which we did just do the sew along for, as well as the dress version. Once you're done, make sure that you tag me at needleandthebell.com so that I can see your makes too. All right, friends, happy sewing.